vision of the Almighty. Numbers 24, verses 1 to 25. We have four thoughts. No enchantments, verses 1 to 4. But the words of God, verse 5 to 9. Not for promotion, nor for filthy lucre, verse 10 to 14. But still the words of God, verse 15 to 25. Acts 6, verse 4. Uh, but we will continue steadfastly in prayer and in the ministry of the word. Watch many observe the phrase ministry of the word can be translated as the as service of the word. The work of serving men with God's word is known as the ministry of the word. And the persons who are involved in this service are called ministers of the word. Ministry refers to the work while Ministers refer to the person. The ministry of the word occupies a very important place in God's work. The announcing of God's word and the ministry of this word to men follow certain specific principles. And God's servants should learn well these principles. Throughout the Old Testament and New Testament, God spoke. He spoke in the Old Testament. He also spoke in the New Testament at the time of Christ and through the church. The Bible shows us that the most important work of God on earth is the speaking out of His Word. If we remove His Word from His work, there is practically nothing left of the work. The main item of His work in this world is His speaking. Without the Word, there would be no work. As soon as the Word is removed, His work becomes a void. We must realize that the place that God's word occupies in his, is in his word. As soon as we remove his word from his work, the letter sees God's work is carried out through his word. In fact, his word is his work. His work is occupied with nothing but his word. How did God release his word? It is amazing and unusual to realize that God's word is released through man's mouth. That is why the Bible speaks not only of God's word, but of the ministers of God's word. If God did speak all his speaking directly, there would be no need of any human instrument, any ministers of the word. However, he chose to speak through men. He, this brings in the matter of the ministers. And we must be clear before the Lord that God's work is conveyed through his word and his word is released through men this immediately brings us to the crucial place of men in god's work god does not release his word through any means other than god man's mouth he needs ministers of the word he needs men to convey his word throughout the old and new testament we find three kinds of people simply stated three kinds of ministers of the word are involved in spreading god's word in the old testament God's word was released through the prophets, that is, through the minister, ministry of the prophets. When the Lord Jesus was upon earth, God's word became flesh, and there was the ministry of the Lord Jesus. And in the remainder of the New Testament, God's word was released by the apostles, that through the ministry of the apostles. And we notice today that God's word comes through to us in the completed canon of scriptures and therefore the ministers of the word today would take time to study of his word let his word sanctify his life and from there through the help of the holy spirit uh, be the mouthpiece for god in the old testament selected god selected many prophets to speak his words these prophets received visions and spoke like balaam which we see here in case uh, was a prophet his prophecy was one of the greatest prophecies in the old testament which we saw in numbers 23 to 24 the prophets in the old testament were the ministers of god's word spoke when god's word came upon them balaam prophesied when the spirit of god came upon him he involuntarily spoke what the spirit told him to speak his own feelings and thoughts were temporarily suspended by god the revelation and utterance that he received from God was totally unrelated to his own condition. There was sim simply, it was simply spoken out of his mouth. There was no, sh no share in, he had no share in God's word. His opinions, his feelings, his thoughts were not involved at all. In other words, 
God used his mouth as if it were his own. Balaam was a typical example of an Old Testament minister of the word. The Holy Spirit gave the words and God would give the utterance under the constraining and restraining power of the Holy Spirit. God's word was released through the Old Testament minister's mouth. There's no possibility of a mistake. God used men, but these men were merely conveyors of the word. The human element were kept to a minimum in these revelations. Nothing of man was added to divine to the divine utterance. Man's rule was merely being God's mouthpiece. We see also in the Old Testament men like Moses, David, Isaiah, Jeremiah, whom God used, whom God speak for him in their work. However, they were more than just mouthpieces for God. They were slightly more advanced than Balaam or some of the other prophets. Most of Moses' writing were given by God through dictation. Right? God spoke, he wrote, as was in the Ten Commandments when God wrote when his, uh, by, by his fingers on two tablets of stone. He spoke according to the instructions given by God. He spoke according to the instructions of God, but in the sense he was speaking in the same principle as Balaam's speaking. And so here, we, the Lord wants us to see and notice and uh, help us to understand and know uh, what uh, the Lord wants us to, to see so that uh, we may be able to uh, uh, learn uh, what God wants us to learn out of His Holy Word. So, when verse 1, uh, our first thought, no enchantments. When Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not, as at other times, to, see, to seek for enchantments. But he set his face toward the wilderness, and Balaam lifted up his eyes and saw Israel abiding in his tents according to their tribes. And the Spirit of God came upon him, and he took up a parable and said, Balaam, son of Beor, has said, and the man whose eyes are open has said, has said, which heard the words of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance and having his eyes open." The blessing itself, which Balaam, Matthew Henry observed here, pronounces upon Israel, is much the same with the, with the two we had in the foregoing chapter. So this is the third time that he spoke, uh, that he endeavoured to speak. Uh, uh, each time he tried to speak, well, uh, it was something, uh, as it were, against his will. Uh, the method proceeding here varies in several instances, Balaam laid aside the enchantments which he had uh, depended on and he used no spells, no charms uh, and they did him no service. It was to no purpose to deal with the devil for a curse and when it was plain that God was determined immovably to bless. So you see here that, uh, that God super intense over his work right? and he super intense over his word uh, so that his word will establish his work right? sooner or later God convinced men of their folly in seeking after lying vanity so it was vain glory in the sense for Balaam right, who well, who thought that he could thwart God's purpose and he could uh, do uh, what uh, the enemy was seeking upon his people, Israel. And you, you would notice that he did not retire into a solitary place as before, but he set his face toward the wilderness where Israel lay encamped. And there is... Well, we said that whatever that took place, right, uh, his design uh, was thwarted and he had to submit to God when the Spirit of God came upon him. Uh, we said that this is a spirit of prophecy so that when it came, uh, he may not be able to say that uh, it was him. It was him. But it was 
the vision of the Almighty. It was God Himself. So that men would not have the glory, right? but the glory goes to God. And the Apostle Paul also speaks with humility of his visions uh, and revelations. He speaks of right, how the Lord uh, brought him to the third heavens, but he did not speak in the first person. He spoke in the third person. Why? Well, because he knew, uh, he knew that it was not him. It was the Lord uh, who was accomplishing his own purpose. And so, but Balaam was different. Right? Balaam was different. Uh, you notice that uh, he shows forth many a sign of, uh, of a man, right? very much, uh, we say, uh, 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 engulfed right? by his own uh, fallen, fallenness. Right, his own power to receive and bear those revelations, he fell into a trance as, um, as he did. And here, the Lord wants us to see that he attempted to curse Israel. Right? But, uh, well, he did not succeed. Um, God knew and God uh, overruled. And so from verse 5 to 9, he spoke but the words of God. Yet again, blessings came. Yet again, blessings came. How goodly are thy tents, O Jacob. Right. It was a word of praise right, concerning Israel that was encamped just, just below right, at the valley. And uh, here you see that uh, it was a beautiful picture uh, of uh, what we say of uh, flourishing uh, beauty uh, of God um, uh, well nourishing his people right? nourishing his people and verse 8 says God brought him forth out of Egypt he has as it were the strength of a unicorn and he shall eat up the nations of his enemies and shall break their bones and pierce them through with his arrow. So when Balak hear all this, well, he was very upset, isn't it? Because he, Balaam was supposed to, uh, by the, by the uh, word of God uh, or by the, uh, by the instruction of Balak, uh, uh, speak the words of curses. And yet, it was different, uh, the words that came out. So there, instead, right, uh, those, were words of, uh, those were words of praise, those were words of blessing upon Israel. And it speaks of the defeat of Israel's enemies. Right? Verse 8 says, And God brought him forth out of Egypt. Uh, he hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, and shall break their bones and pierce them through with his arrows. Wow! <laughs> what a word of indictment, right? <laughs> Imagine they have set up, you know, these uh, altars, right, at a very high land, overlooking, thinking that they could do harm to them, and yet, the prophet's words were totally different. Right? And so you see, you know, with God taking care of us, with God uh, with us, helping us, uh, you would see that the enemy is, uh, well, we said, uh, uh, without strength, uh, without God's permission, right? they can't. But you would see also later on in chapter 25, uh, how Israel fell, right? how Israel fell. Um, Israel fell because, uh, well, they yielded. They yielded right, to temptation. But with God protecting them, they could not. If they would not give over themselves over to the enemy, just as it was in the Garden of Eden. Right? God said to them, don't eat the fruit, don't eat the fruit. Right? from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. As long as they obeyed, they did not eat, 
uh, God would protect them. But if they do, then, well, death would come upon them. Right? As you, you would see, uh, destruction came upon them. And so here, uh, you would notice uh, what God uh, did for them uh, and what God is speaking here uh, in verse uh, 9. He couched, he lay down as a lion and as a great lion who shall stir him up. Blessed is he that blesses thee and cursed is he that curses thee. So Matthew Henry observed well, he says this, that now he does so in the plains of Moab. He asks no leave of the king of Moab, nor is he in fear of him. Shortly will he do so in Canaan. When he has torn his prey, he shall take his repose, quiet from the fear of evil, and bid defiance to his neighbors. So he's described, Israel is described as a lion. What is a lion? Well, lion is a very strong animal in the kingdom, in the animal kingdom, right? And Israel is described as that kind of a, of a, of a, uh, 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 a strong uh, host, an uh, army uh, that, is, that uh, will prevail. And so here, uh, you see uh, our third thought uh, from verse 11 to 14, not for promotion nor for filthy lucre. Verse 10 says, And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote his hands, and together, and Balak said unto Balaam, I called thee to curse my enemies, and behold, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. Therefore now flee thou to thy place. I thought to promote thee unto great honour, but lo, the Lord hath kept thee back from honour. And Balaam said unto Balak, Speak I also to thy messenger, which thou sendest unto me. If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord to do either good or bad of my own mind. But what the Lord has said, I will speak. And now, behold, I, will, I go unto my people. Come, therefore, and I will advertise thee what this people shall do to thy people in the latter days. So you see here, uh, how important it is that for the prophet of God, right, he is to speak the word of God. And here you see how God intervened, uh, intervened to protect his people and even his prophet uh, were not allowed to speak anything that uh, is beyond what he wanted them to speak. And so here, uh, the Lord uh, wants us to see and understand uh, and uh, Balaam admitted, he said, if Balak would give me a house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord. Uh, here, uh, if you were to look at the uh, New Testament, uh, Peter says in 1 Peter 5.1, The elders which are among you, I exhort, which am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory which shall be revealed. Feed the flock which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by filthy, cons not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. So pastors stated here as elders were not to be greedy for dishonest gain, to be greedy for money, but eager to serve, ready to labor to gain souls. And we remember the example of Gehazi. And Gehazi was covetous, uh, the covetous servant of Elisha. After Elijah cleansed Naaman, you remember? <laughs> uh, Naaman was a general from Syria and how he was plagued with leprosy and he couldn't be cured. So then his little uh, Hebrew mate said to, he, said to him that hey, there is a prophet in Israel you can come to him. And so he came to the king and king said, oh, who am I? I'm, I have no strength to, to, to cure. But hey, there is a prophet in Israel. And his name is Elisha. And so he came and before he came, uh, the prophet said to Naaman, 
go to the river of Jordan and wash yourself seven times and thou will be clean. And she was so angry, right? You remember? He said, hey, I, I, in Syria, we have so much better rivers. You asked me to wash in this dirty uh, Jordan. <laughs> then his mate said to him, hey, if you can be cleansed, why not? And so he submitted himself. He, he did so and wow, he was, his skin became like, like that of a baby. Right? Killed. So happy. Uh, then you see uh, Gehazi, uh, the, the, the servant, uh, came and uh, wanted something from them. Second Kings 5, verse 25 to 27. He went and stood before his master, and Elisha said unto him, Whence cometh thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no hither. And he said unto him, Went not my heart with thee, when the man turned from his chariot to meet thee? Is it a time to receive money and to receive Garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and men servants and maid servants, the leprosy therefore of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence, a leper as white as snow. Being an elder is not about getting something for yourself, but about giving yourself as a shepherd to those assigned to your care. We saw this in the way Christ served, always up and about the business of the Lord, ready to serve sacrificially and unconditionally out of love. It was that love that sent Jesus to enter human history. Right? When he did all this, wow, it, it was uh, amidst uh, great betrayal, uh, great uh, pain, suffering that he had to go through. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion on them, and he healed their sick. So in 2 Peter 2, Peter spoke of those false teachers who through covetousness, they with feign words, make <coughs> merchandise of God's flock, will receive God's judgment. Elders must be careful not to be overcome by this sin of covetousness. Ezekiel pronounced God's indictment against the covetous shepherd in Ezekiel 34, uh, verses 1 to 12. It says here, The Son of Man prophesy against the shepherds of Israel, prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe to be, be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fat, but ye feed not the flock. The disease have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, neither have ye bought again that which was driven away, neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty ye have ruled them, and they, have, they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and they, they, became, they became meat, to his beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through the mountains and upon every high hill, and yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search to seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherd, and will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, and they may not be meat for them, they may, they may not be meat for them. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. So I will seek my sheep and will deliver them out of all their places where they have scattered in the cloudy and dark day. So we see here. Uh, how 
Balaam has failed to curse Israel. And he rightly said that he could not uh, receive of all the good that Balak, although Balak wanted to give to him <laughs> to fulfill the task of cursing Israel. He couldn't. And uh, the Lord uh, was sovereign and in control uh, over his people to protect them. Right? Uh, and so here, as we said, as is observed, uh, the Lord has kept thee back from honor. Those who are anyway losers by their duty are commonly, uh, Matthew Henry observed, uh, upbraided with it as fools for referring it before their interest in the world. Whereas if Balaam had been voluntary and sincere in his adherence to the word of the Lord, though he lost the honor of Balak, designed that's designed him by it, God would have made up that loss to him abundantly to his advantage. In other words, he, he didn't have to go at all. He could have just said no, but because of his own covetousness, right, therefore he went. And the fourth thought, huh? but still the words of God, verse 15 to 25, and he took up his parable and said, Balaam, son of Beor, has said, and the man whose eyes are opened has said, he has said, which heard the words of God and knew the knowledge of the Most High, which saw the vision of the Almighty falling into a trance, having his eyes opened, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. Not nigh. There shall Come a star out of Jacob, a scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Sheth. So here you notice that instead of pronouncing a curse upon Israel, now a curse was placed upon the Moabites themselves. Right? So uh, how, uh, how the tables were turned, right? just like there was that man called Haman, Right, who built a gallow to wanted to kill Mordecai, the Jew, uh, and how the Lord, by many circumstances, intervened, and by his intervention, right, uh, Haman was hung on the gallow that he built to hang Mordecai. Right, as it were, the stone that he wrote, wrote back upon him. Right, the trap that he set, uh, he fell himself fell into it. So here, well, we say that the God prevented the prophet uh, from doing evil. Uh, God prevented the prophet from doing evil. God prevented the prophet from uh, 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 doing, uh, well, harm uh, to God's people. Uh, God is in sovereign uh, control over all and uh, of course then uh, from verse 18 to uh, 25 uh, there, there were further uh, there were further descriptions of uh, what was said concerning uh, the future of the people of Israel and the people who were surrounding them uh, we shall continue uh, again the next time. May the Lord uh, strengthen us uh, and, and help grant us understanding. Amen.